it's Tuesdays, and you know what that means. It means it's No Filter Tuesday. And I am here today with, we've been waiting for this for a very long time, and finally it has come. Television has finally understood that there are black queens. Black queens means in royalty, the monarchy, black her highness queen. And we have the black queen who is ruling television right now. She is an extremely experienced and celebrated theater actress in the UK and worldwide. And I cannot believe that she had time to fit in no filter. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the one and the only, Her Highness, Golda Rochevelle. Yay! Golda! Yay! <laughs> hey, from one queen oh to another. Oh my goodness! Golda, yes. how are you doing? I'm doing good, you know, really, really good. I mean, obviously we're in lockdown in London. Um, how in long? London. Yeah, in London. And how long we're going to be in lockdown for, who knows, you know? So we're dealing with it, you know? I'm at my mum's house. I'm in Brixton. Do you know? Do you remember Brixton? Uh, but, uh, but of course I remember Brixton. <laughs> Brixton! <laughs> South London girl, I love it. Yeah. Oh my yeah, God, yeah. love that. I, yeah. was there, I was there not that long ago. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Good, good, good. Yeah, I, came, I, I came home, um, family, grandma passed away, Brixton. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry to hear but that. It has changed so much. Thank you so much. But it's changed. It's become yeah. so sheesy. Yeah, it's gentrified What's happened? now, girl. It's gentrified now. Wait. wait. Have they got Brixton Brasserie? I saw. I think I saw Brixton Brasserie when I was asked there. But yeah, you know what? So. Brixton's got its roots. We've got some good roots. So we've got Golda, and then we've got David Bowie. I mean, that ain't bad, yeah. is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're doing well. We're doing well, yeah. South London Massive. Has lockdown been a busy lockdown for you? How have you been? What have you been doing? Can you yes, tell us? Uh, Yes, I've been working. I got the chance to go to Guadeloupe to do Death in Paradise. How is that? I've never been to Guadeloupe, actually. I've always wanted it was, to. It was beautiful. It's such a gorgeous island. Beautiful, beautiful island. I was there for about so 10 did, days. And during middle of lockdown or did when the first yeah, lockdown? That was, or? That, was in, that was just at the end, I think, of the first lockdown. So like June, July, around yeah. there? Yeah. It was hot. I binged your Let's show. I binged it in 36 hours. I could not. Wow. It was not possible to just <laughs> say, okay, I'll watch one till next week. I had no discipline about it. I just went right through it in 36 hours. I tried to have self-control on the last two. Right, okay. What's that? I, I think, you know, you, you and the rest of the world, Naomi, has gorged on this program. We needed it. Yeah. We needed it. Yeah. We really I, did. And no, we needed you. We needed to see this. All the brown skinned girls can now see a black queen. Oh, yeah, I know. It's so. And a Duke. Yes, exactly. Well, a lot, you know, and uh, a lady, Lady Danbury as well, Adjua. Lady Danbury. Um, you know, I, black and brown people are all over the show, which I think is so joyous. Wonderful. So wonderful, so inspiring, you know. I, I wish I'd had something like that when I was growing up, you know, to inspire me. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I'm just pleased that we have it now. It was time, people. And as you say, so I, think time. Came, I think it came at the right time as well because of the pandemic. People have been shut indoors. They've been deprived of escapism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think Bridgerton, mm -hmm gives that escapism to mm -hmm. a lot of people. Um, and I think, yeah, the timing was perfect. The timing was perfect. May I ask you, did you film that before lockdown? 
The first yes, time we, or during? We, yeah, we did. We filmed uh, 2018 through into February 2019. Yeah. No. Oh, so you filmed that no, a no, long no, no, time no. ago. No, 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 I'm wrong. I'm getting my dates wrong. 2019. 2019 to 2020. February 2020, we finished. So have you finished, you finished February. Okay, so okay, so just before lockdown, the first lockdown. Just before lockdown, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Oh, that was well, lucky you. Good timing, wasn't it? Good timing. And yeah. may I ask you, did you film in UK or in America? In in the UK. You filmed in the UK. Yeah. <laughs> Do you feel that having Chandra Rhymes, who is huge in television? and used to basically own all of Wednesday Night TV with Grey's Anatomy, How to Get Away with Murder, um, Scandal. Scandal. I mean, do you feel like because Chandra Rhymes was, is part of the, one of the producers or executive producer, I'm not sure which one it is, but she's involved and that's a big deal, that's all I can say, is do you feel like that's why it was able to have its diversity? Absolutely. She is the champion of diversity and representation at this precise moment. We have very few black and brown uh, creators at the top of the food chain, you know, and Shonda Rhimes is one of them. Ava DuVernay is another mm -hmm. one. Uh, gosh, uh, yeah. you know, uh, um, Tyler Perry is another one. Lee Daniels. Exactly, Oprah on her, yeah. um, you know, the show. Yeah doing we have very few when you're saying it like this it's true shonda rhymes was the one who greenlit this um is executive producer smart 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 absolutely absolutely she she gets i think what humanity needs you know yeah I, she gets uh that kind of um what's the word kind of commercial aspect of of television and commercial aspect of storytelling yeah she does yeah. absolutely i mean we want more we can't wait for you know i feel like was this is it sandra's first production for Netflix, outside yeah. of the united states yes this I, is, what her, I, is this with her new netflix deal one of the first exactly right yeah. it's it's amazing so i can only imagine what's to come and sh i think it's absolutely the time of the changing it around and switching it up couldn't be more perfect yeah agreed i'd like to go back to, with you to the beginning so i know that you did you grow up in london born in london no i was born in south america where in south america how interesting i love that in Guyana. In Guyana. Yeah. I was born now, in Georgetown, Guyana in 1970. In 19... We've got something in common. We had big birthdays, baby. Big, big birthdays. birthdays this last year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we can celebrate it again this year. Yeah. As now, far as I'm concerned, I'm still 49. I'm still 49. No, I'm actually, I've, I've claimed 50 and I'm all right about it. Okay. It's actually fun. Yeah, it's it is fun. fun. It's a lot and fun. you don't look 50, Golda, please. So. Yes, yeah, so I was born in Georgetown, Guyana in South America in 1970. Yeah. And may I ask, like, what was growing up there like? We moved around a lot. I moved actually to England with my parents and my younger brother. Uh, in 1975. I don't remember much. I remember, because uh, I had a nanny, and yeah. I remember her being beautiful and gorgeous, and the, her skin was black like silk. Gorge. I, I, remember, I remember that vision and that kind and of- And she was, must have been very kind. She was beautiful, lovely, nanny. Nanny, we called her. And I remember my parents being in love. You know, my mum was is was white. She actually passed away in March 2020. Oh, I'm uh, so sorry. Thank you. Not of COVID, um, but uh, from complications from an operation she had. 
But I think um, as a result of COVID, um, you know, she passed away. That's I'm so, so sorry. Oh, thank oh, you. Oh, this has been a really big... It's been... There's been a year. Like ultimate highs. Ultimate, like, super fucking highs. And extreme lows you know it's been a roller coaster year a roller coaster year you know dark times great yeah. times you know um but i think you have to take it in your stride my parents left me very very grounded both me and my brother you know have good heads on our shoulders and good feet on the earth yeah yeah you know and i'm so proud to call them my mother and father. I'm so, so proud of that. And, you know, going back to being in Guyana, that's the, that's the feeling um, that I always had with my parents mm -hmm. of being super, super proud um, of their journey, of their struggle, you know, being a mixed race couple yeah. Um, back in the day, it wasn't easy for them. It that could not. Have, it's going, it's going it's to start to say that it couldn't have been easy. It wasn't easy, you know. I uh, mean, in that time period, period, we've heard so many from whether they were from Sammy Davis Jr. Yeah. to I have friends of mine, a couple in that married in 1969. Yeah, white father, black mother, they went through it. So I could. Yeah. It's they did. They did go through it. I mean, they had a love of so many things, you know, they met in Barbados, actually singing in a choir together. <laughs> yeah. wow. And so they stood next to each other in the choir. And my mum tells the story of how my dad started to sing. And she was like, that was the most beautiful sound she had ever heard. And just so got taken by him. <laughs> So, How divine. You know, yeah, absolutely divine. So that kind of ignited the flame of love, I suppose. I suppose. Mm -hmm. And music has always been a, a big thing in my family. My, my dad wrote songs. He was a, a Church of England priest, actually. Yeah, he wow. was in the priesthood. He was in the priesthood. But he all, uh, he played the piano, he played the guitar, he played the bass guitar, he play, played the steel pan. Oh, what he a wrote, talented man he was. Yeah, he was, he was. He wrote an album. Uh, do you remember the group Sky? No. They were a big group, British band. And my dad, I remember going to Drury Lane. They did a Christmas concert. Drury Lane. Yeah, and my dad sang with them at this concert and I was sitting. Drury Lane was like the thing, wasn't it? I mean, yeah. I used to hear about Drury Lane, like it was like the place it's to be huge. for talent and yeah, it's huge. creatives it's and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my dad had this, you know, wonderful experience and he wrote an album, got to write, uh, to record in Herbie's studio in Hammersmith. Um, so, and then my brother is very musical as well. My brother can play anything you give him. So do you feel like that's what drew you into wanting to be in the arts? How did, where did you decide or when did you decide? Yeah. Was that an influence on you in a certain way that you wanted to be in the arts? Well, kind of. You know, yes, I had all this music around me, but I was passionate about sport. I was really, really sporty. Sports? Sports, yeah. And I was going to be an athlete. And what type of athlete? What was your favorite type of sport? I thought, it was gonna, I thought you were going to say something completely different. <laughs> May I no. ask what so, was your... So, so I would have been, you know, Jessica Innes? Yes, I remember. She, I remember. She's like a... Don't a know her. Yeah, yeah, she's like a decathlon or, a, so I would have done kind of decathlon, that kind of stuff. I was good at the long jump, the javelin, uh, the 100 meters, um, the 100 meters relay. So I trained for the Olympics. Oh my days. At, at a very, very, at a, at a young age. So like I would have been, gosh, in my teens, early, early teens. Yeah. 
late teens, I was um, I was a member of Harlow Athletics Club. I broke records at school. I got, you know, like medals. I played for my county. I played hockey. I played tennis. That's incredible. Gold, I love that. Yeah, I was like, So mad. you know the discipline. So you yeah. know about discipline. And I feel like no matter what discipline you, once you know something like that, physical, physically, because it's yeah. physical and mental, obviously, Absolutely. you can apply that to anything. Is that right? Absolutely, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. But then, um, what, what, what turned the corner for me and took me down the road of acting and singing was I, had, I got an injury. I sprained you my got ankle. A, an injury. The injury. Yeah. I now was that my, injury of fate? Yeah. I mean, I, I think so. I think so. Um, so, I mean, I always had music and acting alongside my training yeah. as an athlete. So I think because of the injury, you know, singing and dancing, and I, I, I did loads of um, shows with my school. I played Bugsy Malone in Bugsy Malone at school. Oh, Bugsy Malone. Don't you? I love that film, <laughs> Alan Parker. We need to watch that again soon. Yeah, it's really great. So, I mean, that was the reason why my life then went down you know, the theater and singing and acting. Uh, um, Can I ask you something? Did you feel while you were training to be a decathlon in training for the Olympics, did you ever feel the race of your two parents and their union? Did you ever feel it within yourself? Was it ever an issue for you in school or in any of the things you had to do? You just did yeah. not see it. No. Good for you. No. And I think, you know, I think that's my parents, their attitude to life mm -hmm. and the way you live your life. Um, the way you're raised, yeah. The way I was raised has a lot yeah. to do with it. I was raised, you know, it was about kindness. It was about support. It was about, you know, my mother was, um, she became later on in her life, um, a, a social worker for the senile dementia. So there was a lot of care and was, patience and patience you sound like you were encouraged 110 percent by your parents which is yeah. a wonderful thing yeah we, i don't think i was ever told that i couldn't do anything mm -hmm. i don't think i was ever told that nothing wasn't possible wasn't possible yeah it was all possible yeah you know you did a lot of theater yes and theater for me is like the best learning experience to be in your profession. I, I mean, I did yeah. theater, I went to theater school, but I mean, you did yeah. theater. I dabbled in it when I was a child. I would do these little shows and pantomimes and stuff like that. But I mean, you've lived and breathed theater. Yeah. And I mean, that in itself is another education, another discipline. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Eight shows a week is not funny. You know? For how many years? For years. But for years, decades. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And mm -hmm. I love theater, I absolutely love theater. I love the immediacy of it. Um, I love that, I love that feeling of, you know, getting your half hour call, getting your quarter hour call, getting your five minute call, getting your beginner's call and knowing that the doors will shut you know, in, in the auditorium, the doors will shut and all of us actors, are inside. Actors, crew members, musicians, if I'm doing a musical, um, you know, auditorium is full, front of house, everybody is inside. Mm. And we're going to have a magical experience for two hours. You know, it's just us experiencing this story. You know, I describe. I never thought of it. It's like I never thought of it that way, but it really is. You're in a cocoon. It's a for two place. hours in your own special world. Place. Yeah, absolutely. And we're having a dialogue together. You know, yeah. if it's a comedy, you hear them laugh. Great. We're communicating. The audience. I I'm love. a great, great believer in the. In oh, the when is it going to come back? 
Oh, I know. I don't know. I don't know. I I pray soon, but I fear. I was hoping no, it could be twenty one. They could all come back and. Whoa. We'll see. We'll, see. Um, well, let me ask you this: the switch from theatre. Did you go into film first or television? Television. Television. Yeah. How was that for you? I love television and film. I love it because of the pace. It really lends itself to my kind of, I don't think I have um, um, ADHD or anything like that, um, but it does lend it itself to my inquisitive nature. Mm -hmm. It lends itself to my slightly impatient nature with my creativity, yeah? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I love theatre. I do love theatre. I do, do, do. I will stress that. But there comes a time for me in theatre where I need to move on. And television and film give quick, me Quick, that. quick, quick, quick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which yeah. is great. Yeah. Once you've done one scene, it's done. It's finished. Yeah. In the can go, next. Go. Moving on. In the can. Move it on. But it's also... So, it's yes. also... I find it fascinating that I have to check my ego in film. In and what television. way? When the director says, I've got it, you have to trust and believe that he has. Mm -hmm. Even if you're going, mm, I'm I could have sure. done it, I could have done one more take. I could have done could've one more. Got, I got to say that word better. Ego. Let me just do one more ego. try. Yeah, I ego, 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 tick, 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 ticking away. And mm -hmm. I love that. I love to challenge that. I love to trust and go, yeah, you've done it, Golda. You've done it. And that, did, it, did it take you a long time to get to that point of trusting? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it did. It did. It's all a learning process, you know? That's what yes. life's about. And that's what I think, you know, us as creative people, we have empathy for life. We have empathy for characters. We have empathy for other creative people. And I think that drives a, a lot of learning. I really identify with what you're saying, Golda, because I feel in modeling, even a makeup artist, a touch is important to me. A hairdresser, it's a touch. Yeah. I, can, if, I can feel in someone's nervousness, I can feel, looking the photographer even though he's behind yeah. the camera yeah i can feel it if yeah. i can trust it if i cannot trust it yeah you know and i've gone on that that's basically the feeling that's carried me throughout my whole career exactly Is that and, you know the instinct as well um the way i approach my work is through is from instinct you know I, i'm not yeah. really a researcher you know, um, I do a little bit of research every now and again. If if it's needed, I'll go, you know, completely into like Shakespeare. Is, Same uh, here. I, yeah. I do a little bit, but I still love that unknown oh, mystery. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the, the, um, the, 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 the little bit of suspense. That's where the magic happens. You know, yeah. the magic happens in the unknown. I don't want to talk, I don't want to get, I don't, even if I know you for 30 years, I'm not talking to you when I'm working. I still need that little bit yeah. of distance. Yeah, 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 exactly. Us, once we're in lunch break, I'll talk to you. Go back yeah. on set, I'll act like I've just met you. <laughs> this is the way I am. <laughs> it's just, it's something I really do identify with what you're saying. May I ask you, so how did it feel to play? A black queen, her royal highness, running the monarchy, a Bridgerton. What did that feel like for you? You know, I want to say epic, but I think that's too, too kind of uh, massive. So I want to find something. Because this is a deep thing. This is a deep. For us women of color? Oh. Yeah, I, I, yeah, it is deep. It really, really is deep. And I think 
it's an honor, you know, it's an honor to portray this woman. I knew a bit about her before, and I know that there's some controversy about whether she was black, whether she, you know, whether she wasn't. And I think that's healthy. Oh, you know? let there be. There's yeah. always going to be. Let it be. Let it be. Let and it I, be. And I think, you know, people say, what do you say to the people, you know, who, who, who say no, that she wasn't. And I say, I don't say anything to them. That, I, they're I, out, they have their right to have their opinion. Absolutely. You're, doing, right. you're doing your job in portraying the essence absolutely. of my her. My path is my path. Their path is their path. Exactly. And, and if possible, we can learn from each other's path. The essence is what we need to feel, and that's what you give us. Great. That's Great. what it's about, right? Great. I saw that your hair and makeup was done for you, a woman of color. Yes. Is that right? Absolutely right. Absolutely now, right. Like your wigs and can you give us a bit the, of insight? The, the little bit of <laughs> Afro hair at the front on some of them. The dreadlocks. The, the Love the Afro. dreadlocks. Yeah. We've been in this industry a long time. And as you mentioned just then, you know, there's very few times that somebody comes up to you and says, let me talk about your hair. Mm. I've done some, oh, yeah. I've done some research. I think we could do this. I think it'd be really great to have the little Afro shirt, you know, your little hair coming out of the front. We're going mm -hmm. to make the wig so that it looks like you've got, you know, Afro hair. We're going to do mm. dreadlocks. We're going to do a big Afro. Um, there's very, very, I don't think, I think this is the second time in my career that that has happened. That someone's ever come up and really done the work. Yeah. Isn't that just lovely when that happens? It is lovely when it's, when, when it happens. I wish, I wish we could do it more, you know, I wish, because there are people out there. But, of course, there's definitely know. are people out there, people that want the work, people that know how to do the work, yeah. people that deserve the work. Absolutely, absolutely. Was there any favorite wig that you had, may I ask? Yes, I have two favorite wigs. I have the, 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 the pink outfit yeah. that I wear at the tea party with Mama Bridgerton, and that wig is my friend. So that whole look, is yes. my favorite and then the natural hair what they what they call the natural hair which is the darker wig that does the cascading how long did it take you to get ready each day i think we got it down to about 45 minutes for the wig and then about half an hour for the costume because the costume is double corseted double corseted at the beginning, I had two people dressing me. So you had the corset, the, yeah, the yeah. corset. Then you have the pannier. Then you have the skirt over the pannier. That's a lot. Then you have the skirt of the dress over the pannier. Then That's... you have the, the, the breastplate, which is linked in. And then at the back of the jacket with the, with the train, there's a corset that ties up. Whoa, how, I mean, so you just made sure you didn't really drink much water. Well, yeah, I didn't, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was, that, it was difficult to pee in it, baby. Yeah, let's just go there. Yeah, I say. Yeah, it was but difficult. we are known in England for our costumes. Yes, we are. That, we I seem mean, to win that one women, year after year. How those women did it, I have no idea. Back in the day, in the 18th Back in the day, right? I, no idea how they did that. But I do love a costume. I do. I love it. I love yeah. it. I love it. Who helped inspire you in that this role? Is there My anyone? Mother. Your mother. Of course. This is the first time. So, you know, in my career, Naomi, I've played, I've, let's say I've represented my father, right? Mm -hmm. Because I've played black roles. 
Yeah. So I, I played the nurse. I played the doctor. I played the lawyer. Mm-hmm. I played, you know, that the kind of pigeonhole. Or the civil servant, the stuff that, yeah. yes. The that boxing. Black I played all my boxes. Those roles in UK. Yeah. <laughs> Not so funny, but. This is the first time that I've been able to play the essence of my mother. Mm-hmm. This is the first time I've been able to speak her language. You know, enjoy the tonality of my, I smile because whenever my friends would first meet my mom, they would always say, oh, she's posh. She's posh. She's posh. <laughs> She was my mum, but was, she spoke. She spoke eloquently. She so spoke eloquently so well. And you know, when she was growing up, she had staff. She had a butler. She had a nanny. My grandparents were. Um, uh, do you know? Do you know public schools? You understand what I mean by public schools yes. over here in England? Yes. So private, you know, educated posh mm-hmm. schools. My grandfather was headmaster of one of one of the biggest. This was before the war. Yeah. So my mum had butlers. So she grew up in a very... She grew up in a very, very privileged... Proper. Yeah. Very, very privileged um, environment. So, you know, alongside the jerk chicken, the rice and peas, <laughs> <laughs> the pepper pot, the planting. I love that. I love that the 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 mix of the two spectrums coming together. Yeah, and making time. you yeah, exactly. and making you Golda. Yeah. Is there any scoop on the show that you can tell us? Like what? Is there something? I in don't your know. Mind? There must have been some scoop. <laughs> that's a lot of. That's a big cast right there. Not that I know. I can tell you that everyone in the cast became. It was a family. family. We were all, we all loved each other dearly and desperately and still do, you know? That's wonderful. I became, I became great friends with Hugh who plays Brimsley. Uh, Mama Bridgerton is, you know, a great, great friend. Adua, Adua and I have known each other, seems like forever, you know? So it was so great to work with friends. Um, That's and- wonderful. But no, I don't Who in the cast is more like their character? Is it Simon Bassett? The Duke? I mean, what's he like? Uh, reggae. Reggae is... Oh, he's great. He's everything that you would want a young black actor to be. Mm. He's focused. He's generous. With his creativity, he puts the work in. He's mm. handsome to, you know, the moon. He's easy on the eye. <laughs> he's easy on the eye. Let's say, yeah. He's kind. He's generous. It was, it was an absolute pleasure to work with him. Absolute pleasure. Phoebe as well is divine. And it just, you know, I feel like the honesty came. There was just the honesty. Because they had... You, you went through the motions of the vulnerability, the insecureness, the hurt, the pain, the love, the torture. Yeah. It's all there, isn't it? Just yeah. love Killed it. There. Great actor. I did a bit of research. You played a lesbian Othello. Is that correct? I did. I and did. now you're playing a black queen. What do you feel about those two opportunities in your life? Well, I mean, as an actor. I love Othello, by the way. Hmm? Yeah, uh, uh, it, it never crossed my mind a, a, as a role that I would want to do. Um, it came, my agent phoned me up and said, um, uh, Liverpool Everyman wants to do Othello and they'd like you to cast for it. And I was like, what? Okay. And I wasn't sure to begin with because the instinct straight away for me was to play her as a woman. Mm-hmm. And I was at the, t- at the time in my career where I said to my agent, if they don't go with 
that idea, I don't think I want to do it. Right. You know, because there's been a lot, a lot of kind of female Shakespeare's done, you know, but what I wanted to do was change the pronouns. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's why I did my research. They sent me the stuff and, you know, I learned the stuff. And I went and I sat down and Gemma Bodinet, who was directing it, <laughs> before I'd even spoken, she said, I'd love you to play her as a woman. And I was like, well, I'm, uh, I'm in. That, that was all I needed to hear, you know? That was all I needed to hear. And then from then on, we, we, we discussed over Zoom some ideas. Um, we discussed the changing of pronouns. Mm -hmm. Um, and she was all up for it. And she is probably one of the cleverest directors I've worked with. Um, she knows her shit. She knows her shit. And it was, you know, it was, it was an extraordinary experience. I suffered physically um, and slightly mentally. I mean, they say with that role that it, mar it, that it marks you, you know, and I that really do you. that it marks you in some way and it's it's one of the roles that is always with me do you know what i mean do you feel like it it just really just i feel like it changed your life and it just added yeah. added such a value it gave me for you for you and for you yourself and yourself <laughs> you know what i mean yeah it did I, i'm very grateful for that role it opened very, up very something cool. else yeah that's yeah. put you on the path that you're now on yeah. What's the best advice that you've ever been given as an actress? Enjoy it. Enjoy. Mm. Enjoy it. You know, we're not doing brain surgery. You know, we're storytellers. Storytelling is joyful. My mother used to read me stories, you know, and open up worlds for me as a child. And that's how I see my creativity in this industry. I want to open up worlds for people, you know, and invite yeah. them in. We definitely do that without, with very few words. We feel that from you. In Essence magazine, you told them this role gave black women a seat at the table. What do you mean by that? I think for a long time, we've heard the stories of privileged people. Nothing wrong with that. I've loved some of those stories of the privileged. Mm. The world is ready for our stories. Yes. Hear, hear. But we need people to be, to, we need black and brown people to be at the table, to be able to go, I think I've got a gem here. This story is really great. Here, read it. Mm. I, I, that's what we, we need to open up our lanes, you know? And that's why it's so great to have Shonda Rhimes. To be able to tell your story, exactly. To be able to tell the stories, yeah. It's important. You know, and that table, I, I describe it as a round table. Because at a round table, you can see everybody, you can hear everybody. It is equal. Yeah? There's generosity in that space, in the circle of life. So besides Simon's character, who's the other character you like the most? Mama Bridgerton. Yeah, she's a good character. She is. I think the actress for me is Ruth Gamble is her name. I was, I was blown away by her performance. I think her naturalism, 
her empathy again. Her, her warmth, her, her, her warmth. warmth, her, yeah, her it mother nature. Just oozes. I mean, she wants to give away her, her, her little hens, as we call them, and yeah. put them up there to be with the best man they could marry. But at the same time, you still felt the motherly protection from her. And she's a single mum. You're kidding. No, the character. The character is a single mum. Yes, because you don't see the father. That's right. Yeah. So that, to me, I was just like... Now, the father, what? The father died in war or something? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Her father has passed away. So she's bringing up these eight children all on her own. With the and... interference of her eldest son, who thinks he knows best. <laughs> yeah. But, but she gets him. She, she does, does get him. She does. Because she, she thinks, she thinks knows. mama don't know. Mama knows the yeah. whole time who he's been seeing. Yes. She's not to be messed with, you know. She's not to be messed with. And I love that. I love that. How long do we have to wait for season two? I don't know. Golda? I, I, I don't even know whether there's a season two. We, of we course don't, we, there's going to be a season two. You cannot leave us hanging. We need to see babies. <laughs> well, watch this space. Fingers crossed. Watch this space. Trickster, the Duke told us he couldn't have kids. Well, now we know that's not true. Yeah, so we need to see some offsprings here. Yeah. Please. Well, yeah, well, Shonda, hello, Shonda. Hello, May I ask you, do they ask you to sign like an NDA that you cannot speak, you cannot say anything? But even though on Netflix we get the whole gamut at once anyway. I know, I know. So, so then I, if they I'm ask you to sign, that means there must be a season two. Hello, Shonda Rhimes. Naomi Campbell is... Uh, <laughs> Is desperate for a second season. Listen, they're okay. not Chandra. Chandra doesn't put on one hit wonders, okay? No, that's she true. does not. That's so true. we know that there's more coming because Chandra Rhines has longevity. Absolutely. So we're gonna be in for a treat with Golda in longevity, Her Highness. <laughs> Thank you so much. Golda, it has been such a treat to speak to you. And thank you so much for your kindness, patience, and understanding of me doing no filter here from Africa. Lights <laughs> go out at times. I'm yeah. on a generator. Um, just I can't believe it worked. <laughs> Yeah, no, we got there. We got there. Thank you so much. It's been it's such been a pleasure. And I fun. really, really hope to meet you in person when COVID, we yeah. are COVID free that and in a safe fun. zone. That would be and fun. happy, happy, happy 50th. Thank you. You too, baby. You too. Um, we need to at least have a mocktail yeah. drink. Yeah, yeah. For that. So I'm yeah. going to, when I do get back to England and we're in a safe zone, I will absolutely, I will reach out to try and yeah, meet with me you up. and have a drink. That'll be great. It's It'll been be an absolute pleasure. And your career is so brimming with richness, Thank is the you. way I describe it. Just, we're just, this is the tip of the iceberg. For Thank Golda. you, Dan. Thank you. I really appreciate it. So that. grateful. Thank you so much, my love. And please oh, stay safe. You too. And you be too. well. Say hello to your brother. And I thank I you. I will. Bye-bye, And bye, look forward to seeing you really soon. God bless. Bye. Bye. Thank bye. you, Golda. See ya. Bye. We had Her Highness in person. What an incredibly beautiful soul. Humble soul. Disciplined loving very honored to have met her i know we're going to be seeing so much more of her please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my youtube channel and thank you for watching this week's no filter brown girls out